Howdy, howdy, and welcome to the Red Dirt Aggie Show. I'm Brian, the Red Dirt Aggie, uh, here today with Peyton Howie. Uh, she's uh, she's got that backwoods style vocals and uh, sort of a southern swagger. Recently nominated for Texas Regional Radio's New Female Vocalist of the Year, uh, Texas Country Music Awards Emerging Artist of the Year. Uh, Peyton Howie, uh, how you doing? I'm good. How about yourself? Uh, doing great. Trying to trying to stay warm. It just got like cold out of nowhere, and it's raining and burr, right? But <laughs> yeah, no, I know. I I'm not complaining. I love it. But it's it just literally came out of nowhere. It was hot yesterday, and now it's cold. Yeah, you know, te- Texas tends to tends to do that to you. Just comes out of nowhere. But um, really, your your career's kind of been taken off lately. You know, deservedly so. Obviously, very talented. But what Thank uh. You. What made you want to get into music or really inspired you to become a musician? Yeah, you know, music is such a crazy thing because no matter where you go, everybody has got some kind of bit of music in their heart or their favorite genre. They can have a memory that they relate back to, you know, when they really fell in love with music or something like that. Music just brings people together. It's such a great thing. And um, so initially, I just, I love being um, able to... uh, I guess, be a part of and contribute to something, you know, bigger than myself. And I remember being five years old, going to my very first concert, and um, it was a Carrie Underwood concert, and she brought me up on the stage at five years old. And I remember getting to look out into the faces of everybody there and think, man, like, I want to get to do this. I want to get to share music and uh, get to, you know, put feelings on paper and to music and get to put it out there for people and um, just get to be a part of that and music is such a great thing and you know it's just a a love that i've never been able to deny you know yeah and so you're you're at a concert you know so obviously you already are a fan of that kind of music and then uh, having her bring you up there like that how old were you when that happened if you don't mind me i was five oh wow so that's (laughs) that's obviously gonna leave a huge impression on you and obviously it did right because it's something you still never forgot Oh, absolutely. It's so crazy yeah. to think that, like, that was back on her Some Hearts tour right after she had gotten off of American Idol. And yeah. then she just kept doing things and getting crazy big, you know? And so it's it's funny. It's It just becomes crazier and crazier the more I think about it. So, <laughs> yeah. And was there, was there, like, a reason that she chose to bring you up on stage? Like, had you won a contest or did she just see you and was like, hey, come up here? I really have no idea. I was just dancing <laughs> out in the aisles. It was this outdoor venue in the, you know, the aisles of, uh, like, rows of seats were there. And I was just dancing out in the middle of the aisle. And the lights were kind of panning across the audience. Right. And one of them stopped where I was. And she told her security guard, hey, go grab that little girl and bring her up on the stage. And that just went from there. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm totally down for that. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it's it's really cool when artists do that, you know, for their fans to kind of give back to. Um, that's just really neat to see, you know. And obviously it, it created a whole, you know, kind of inspired you to start your whole music career. So I think that's something that's pretty special. Absolutely, yeah. It was totally such a pivotal moment. Yeah, and uh, like we said, it, it's really been, you know, taking off lately, um, getting that kind of nationwide attention. Um from CMT, Guitar Girl Magazine, uh, Fox News, and you even got uh, an invite to The Voice and American Idol and stuff, right? Yeah, it's been, it's been really crazy because, you know, a lot of the time um, when you look at music as a whole, obviously it's just something that you love to do. It's art. But when it right. comes to the business side of things or your career side of things, you have these goals. And, you know, a lot of people ask Oh, like, well, you know, what's making it to you, you know, or like, what's the you've made it thing in your mind? And I'm like, I don't know if I have that so much of just like, as long as I'm getting to make music and do what I love for as long as I can, um, everything else is just the icing on the cake. It's just, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a bonus round. So (laughs) I'm enjoying it. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of just like you, you want to be able to, to do music as your career. And if, as long as you can make a living doing that and you're continuing to grow and go around and play music, then that that's kind of success in and of itself, you know, and that's, that's awesome. So thank you very much. I appreciate that. (laughs) But, um, what, what are maybe some of the coolest things that you've gotten to be a part of so far in your music career? Man, you know, there's so many really cool um, opportunities, um, of places I've had, had the opportunity to sing and, uh, even right. people I've had the opportunity to meet just um, two weeks ago, 
um, I was invited to do an event uh, for MD Anderson and up in the Dallas area. And I got to um, be there and we, you know, played before uh, Garth Brooks. And it was really cool just to get to meet, uh, I got to meet him and Trisha Yearwood and they were so cool and just talking and super, like sitting there having a full on conversation with them and just getting to talk and um, talk about music and exchange road stories. And it was just really cool to get to talk with them. And um, then earlier um, this year, I would say about two months ago, uh, back in September, actually. So not even two months ago, it's almost, you know, one and a half. But um, I got to open up for Lainey Wilson um, at Billy Bob's uh, with my good friend, Joey Green. And that was a total blast. And then also within the last month, we opened up for uh, Dos Barachos. And that was really cool. Sawyer Park in yeah. spring. And um, those are just some recent things I've had the opportunity to do. Some of my favorites for sure. Well, yeah. And uh, so while getting to play Billy Bob's already, that had to be pretty special, right? I mean, I know that's like a, a major, major venue, you know, the the largest honky tonk and all of that. How How was that? Oh, yeah. I mean, that was so cool. And I mean, that alone in itself was just something that I was just definitely a bucket list item for me. Yeah. You know, there's so much history there and so many cool people that have played there and like all over the place. Like, everywhere you look inside of Billy Bob's, there's like all these cool little memorabilia pieces oh, yeah. and whatnot from different people's shows and all that. And the handprints on the wall is so cool. So I, I love that. That was great. Yeah. Um, congratulations, by the way, in the play there. That's that's awesome. Thank you. Um but what's uh what's your favorite part of the whole music creation process of creating music? I would definitely say being in studio. I mean, I love to write songs and I'm constantly constantly writing like I'll have, you know, little melodies or little phrases or verses and like going on in my head and I'm just like itching to get on my notepad and actually write it right. down so I don't forget it. Like my if you listen to my voice memo section on my phone, you're going <laughs> to think I'm mad because I just like it's like me awkwardly humming things quietly in in public places, <laughs> and um, so I love writing, but definitely the studio because you know getting to mm. see all those awkward voice memos and you know half baked notes in your phone come to life and create something that people you know can rock out to. Kind of get getting the uh, all of those ideas into their final form. <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. Speak. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, what's what's the hardest part of being a musician? Is it uh, is it coming up with ideas for new music or getting it right in the studio? Is it the travel or something else? You know, I think it's really relative to who you are as a person, you know, because I would say for some people that struggle maybe with the creative process, it might be that. Um, but for me, I'm always like, I'm I'm. I'm constantly like have little things going on in my head it's almost like okay which one are we going to do today but I would say for me the hardest thing would be um I think having to be away so often and and it's, it's kind of a it's bittersweet because I love getting to travel and I love getting to right. meet new people it's such a cool thing and having the opportunity to go and play shows in different states and go places you've never been and so many cool people just being like, Hey man, you want to come hang out? You know, it's just, it's the <laughs> coolest thing to get to do that. But it's also hard feeling like you're missing out on, um, you know, birthdays and, and, and mother's day or other holidays and just, you know, going out on a Friday night with your friends, you know, the, it's, it's funny to think cause as a musician, your life is kind yeah. of backwards because <laughs> you're working on Friday and Saturday, Sunday, like, you, or, you know, whatever your, your shows are. And then during the week, you're just kind of hanging out and everybody else is working. <laughs> it's, it's really kind of backwards, but it, I mean, it's, it's kind of cool. It has its perks. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, uh, it's a blessing and a curse, I guess. Right. Cause you know, you, you get all of those opportunities, but then you might miss out on some of the more normal things that you would get to do. If not. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, it's, I mean, honestly, there's no complaints because it's so much more fun than being in a cubicle, but like, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's definitely one of those things where you have to really take into consideration the things that you're sacrificing. Cause you're making a choice like with, with every job, with every dream you chase, you're making a choice to, you know, give something up. Like I, I had a, a scholarship, um, when I graduated high school, I got a, sco a college scholarship to play softball. And that was, you know, my first love. Like I'd been playing since I was playing t-ball when I was like five years old and, um, so I got a scholarship to go and play division two, um, out in Colorado. And that was, like I said, my first love. And that was been a dream of mine forever. And at the same time I was doing music and putting out singles and playing shows. So at, 
one point in my life, my freshman year of college, I was a full-time athlete, musician, and student. And uh. I mean, as crazy as it sounds, there was not one thing I regretted about it. Cause it's like, I got to do everything I wanted for as long as yeah. I could. And, um, but you know, coming down to it, I was like, man, okay, so it's music or softball. I got to pick. And I started putting out some singles and, you know, after not even a few months, I was like, all right, yeah, this is, this I is have to finish to my degree <laughs> online. <laughs> so I did. <laughs> well, and, uh, was that a, was that a tough decision for you to make though? I mean, you know, you said softball was your first love and all of that, but then the success of music, like obviously it was the decision you made the right decision, obviously, but w was that hard on you giving up softball, something that you enjoyed so much? Oh, unbelievably, because, you know, that's like literally I would just like eat, sleep, breathe softball and music all the time. And um, being like there's a lot of things. And I, and I know some people from like the athlete's perspective might understand, you know, the work and dedication and time that goes into um, trying to play for a college, like trying to play at a college level and not just like from you, but from your family, you know? So I remember giving my parents the call of like, Hey, so I think I'm going to do music full time. And then being supportive is, you know, is just such a, um, a lucky thing for me that they were down for that. But it was definitely a hard thing. And I remember, I remember playing my last game and being like, all right, well, this is my last game. And, um, I had a good, I had really good last at bat. I had a, it was a, a triple with an overthrow that turned into a home run and I was a catcher. So I packed up my bag and I have not opened it since I still have not opened oh, it. Man. So that's something to be dealt with, um, on another day. But, yeah. um, like I said, you know, as a musician, there's a lot of things that, you know, you occasionally will give up, you know, some, some normalcies that you give up. Right. And um, I guess you can kind of draw like comparisons. You know, you said there's a lot of like dedication and um, that goes into perfecting your craft and stuff uh, as an athlete. And I'm I'm sure it's similar as a musician too. The the amount of work and the attention to detail that you need to be successful there. Absolutely. And, yeah. yeah. I, there's definitely a lot. That and that's the cool thing is that there's lots of things that I've learned from playing. Uh, a, a sport not just a sport but a team sport like right. that I feel like I can apply to music you know especially being you know the front woman of of my band you know what I mean like I'm yeah. sitting there and I got you know four guys behind me looking for me to be like oh hey yeah like you know like just you know just keep rocking out you know what I mean it's, it's kind of <laughs> cool to get to apply some some team player uh whatever you know <laughs> things that you've learned to music it it really does help yeah and um, who who are some of your biggest influences, uh, as well as maybe some of your favorite artists right now? Yeah, so growing up, um, I was definitely, you know, rocking out in a car seat to some Reba. Um, I've always loved Loretta Lynn. She's got, you know, an attitude unlike anybody else. Um, more recent, um, I, you know, obviously, I love Lainey Wilson. Um, I think, yeah. you know, Hardy is a great songwriter and I love his like little crossover of, um, you know, the whole country and hard yeah. rock vibe. I think that the is Mockingbird so cool. Mockingbird and the Crow was such a cool album. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. That was killer. Mm. You know, um, I think Cody Johnson, he's definitely, you know, a great, like, like a storyteller almost, you know? Yeah. Um, I love his vibe, stuff like that. Those are some mm. of my favorites for sure. Yeah. And then when you're out on the road uh, or when you're out playing shows, what's the craziest thing that you've ever seen happen or that's occurred that, that you'd like to share? <laughs> oh man, there's too many to count, honestly. <laughs> like I can't think of just one because it feels like every time I go out on the road, there's something new that happens. I, I know um, like sometimes you'll just have these little things, you know, I don't know. I'll, I'll tell you the la one recently that we had, we, you know, so I, we, I have a, a tour van and, um, you know, it's right. like a, it's a decently large van. So, you know, whenever you're, you know, crashing late at night, you know, going to the hotel, like after a show, you know, the venue, whatever puts you up in a hotel and you go and, um, you know, park in the back of the parking lot, you know, to <laughs> fit the, fit the van and, we parked and you know we're walking into the hotel all like groggy and tired after our set yeah and this these two guys walk up to us and like hey like 
y'all selling tacos? And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's just sometimes you just get people that just like, yeah, man, we're selling tacos at one o'clock in the morning in a, in a Hampton parking lot. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> sometimes, man. Yeah, the crazy. van, they thought, they thought you were the taco truck. <laughs> yeah. I was like, you know what? Maybe we are the taco truck. I was like, we got anything in there? I don't know. <laughs> that's, that's pretty funny though. Um, and the, so I got to ask the Rich O'Toole question. Uh, the beans belong in Chile. He, he's a he's a Texas guy, but you know he's he's pro beans. <laughs> you know what? I feel like, and here's my thing. It might be my personality type. I'm so like, yeah, man, whatever you want. Like, so to me, I'm like, sure. If you want beans in your chili, have beans in your chili. If you don't want beans, beans in just take them out. I don't care. <laughs> like, I really, I mean, I I'm not mad at it. You know extra protein get those gains like I'm, I'm i'm for it but like at the same time i'm like if you don't want them like pick them out you know so yeah no need to get all riled up about it right <laughs> yeah i mean it's not that big of a deal i mean i i think it's like i i i if i had to choose one or the other i'm i'm for it that's cool like why not yeah so so we're gonna say peyton howie is on the, the team beans side then <laughs> yeah yeah and i mean specific yeah i'm down and I think, you know, I think with with it, it comes like, it depends to me on if it's going to be chili that's going to go on a hot dog or if it's chili that you're going to eat out of a bowl. Because, like, I don't know if I want beans on my hot dog. I think that that's kind of pushing the boundaries a little bit. I can understand it, that. Or, like, if you have, like, chili cheese fries, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, maybe then, like, or like a, like a chili burger. Like, I can see where you'd yeah. be like, okay, I don't want beans on a burger. Like, I can see that. But yeah. if it's just like straight up chili, sour cream, cheese, and cornbread chili, like you bean need it beans. Up. I don't care. Because <laughs> yeah, I mean you need beans. It's like you're just eating heartburn soup. Like, like, like that's what Rich is. Rich said too. Like it's just heartburn soup. soup. You just got a bowl of meat and like tomato sauce. Like that belongs on spaghetti. You know. <laughs> yeah, dude, just freaking get a pizza. I don't care. Like you know yeah, what I mean? Like, just <laughs> take your pay. <laughs> <laughs> but um. Did you ever play around College Station or anything? Um, I know uh, Hurricane Harry's is the big the big dance hall up here. We have a lot of Aggie listeners. We're the Red Dirt Aggie Show. Have you gotten the chance to spend any time or play in College Station at all recently? Oh yeah, we actually just did. So we're um, one of the finalists for the Battle of the Bands for the Chili Fest. Oh, okay, awesome. So that'll be super cool. We just played up in College Station and the um, tap or did they still do uh, that? No, at the tap? we were at uh, Cooper's. This is where they're hosting the whole oh, Battle okay. of the Bands. Yeah, it's super okay. cool. I'm like, you know, I'm, that sounds so fun, you know. So we got to play there. Um, and obviously, I got tons of Aggie friends. And I actually, I filmed a music video. And the, the you know, the Aggie Wranglers whole team that, they're, that they had at oh, that time yeah. when I filmed the video, they came and they were in the video. So it was very cool. Um, oh, yeah. Some some great dancers. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're, they're great. So Incredible. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, Chili Fest. Chili Fest is a uh, is a crazy time out there in Snook. <laughs> oh yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the winner of that uh, that Battle of the Bands, they get to perform at Chili Fest, correct? Is that how that works? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So good luck to you there. That uh, if you, uh, you get the opportunity to play out there, it's gonna be gonna be a good time. <laughs> oh, I'm yay! I'm excited either way. I'll probably go and hang out. You know what I mean? And be like, yeah. That's, that sounds like a blast. It's a good time. Um. What's what's your favorite live concert that you've ever been to as a fan? Is it, you know, maybe aside from the Carrie Underwood one, the first one? Right, yeah, that's, five, that's, that's obviously. a given. <laughs> Man, favorite live concert, that's hard. Um, I would say one of the coolest ones that I've had the opportunity to see um, for all the, you know, Conroe, Houston people, I got to see uh, Parker sell out the pavilion in the oh, yeah. woodlands for the first time um, back in, I think it was 2021. Oh, I believe. yeah. 2021. Yeah. yeah, when he sold out Woodlands Pavilion for the first time. That was very cool. I got to be part of that. And I was like, man, this is a really cool show. And uh, I'm a Parker fan. So I was like, absolutely. Oh, yeah. This was super cool to see. We're, uh, we're, we're big Parker fans here, too. We actually we had him on, um, on here uh, a little while back. But nice. um, I've been. I've been going to his shows since like 2015 when he was in 2016, back when he used to be, you know, the opener and nobody knew who he was. And it's, uh, it's been crazy to see him grow and get the opportunity to play at the Houston rodeo and all of these, uh, places around oh, here. I've being seen a local him there guy. too, actually. I just yeah. forgot about that. 
<laughs> I saw him at the rodeo. Yeah, it's just it's it's nuts how he's gone from you know playing for a few hundred people in bars to selling out arenas and stuff. It's oh it's yeah, nuts, the trajectory. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, but, no, I'm like so so happy for him. That's awesome. But uh, what is your opinion on where you would categorize your your genre? Would you say you're your Texas country, or would you say you're more on the rock side of things? I know a lot of your stuff's more upbeat, but I would definitely call myself country rock. Um, because, you know, that is really where I feel, um, like my, my soul at is obviously country music is where my heart's at. Um, right. but I, I, you know, I got a little bit of rock in me. So I'm like, you know, a lot of the stuff that I put out and it's definitely been cool because I've been able to learn to lean more into that songwriter side of me. Yeah. Um, but definitely I would call myself country rock. Right. Especially and considering think... the show that I put on, you know what I mean? Like I'm, mm -hmm full of energy <laughs> <laughs> well yeah and i think i think that makes you know makes for a more entertaining show when someone's up there you know moving around a little bit more maybe than just standing still you know it, it kind of makes it a little more entertaining but um that that high energy kind of show you know um and so you say you're more you're more rock and you recently came out with that new uh the new single pink whitney right and uh, can you talk a little bit about where the inspiration for that song kind of came from? Oh, yeah. So <laughs> originally, the thing that inspired this song is I saw a picture of a girl on Instagram that wore white to another girl's wedding. And for, oh, you know, <laughs> I will say, I mean, the funny thing is that I, I say that, like, like you know, whenever I talk about the song, I'm like, oh, yeah, no, I saw a picture of a girl who wore white to another girl's wedding. And some people, believe it or not, are like, well, what's wrong with that? I'm like, dude, like, <laughs> if, you're, if you're a girl wearing white to another girl's wedding, like, you're a Pink Whitney girl because the only one that should be wearing white at the wedding is the bride, right? Obviously, so... <laughs> just to back things up for, and especially for all the college station people out there y'all know pink whitney has a reputation for messing you up it's really sweet it tastes <laughs> like pink lemonade you know what i mean it's mm. it's one of those things little too much is not good at all and you're gonna be feeling like you're hit by a freight train i'm a pink whitney <laughs> fan by the way but um that, that's just how it be but so you know i'm in the song i'm comparing it to a girl you know what i mean there's like there's lots of girls out there that are like pink whitney and I always tell all my guy friends, I'm like, man, watch out for them Pink Whitney girls because they seem like they're sweet, but next thing you know, they're going to hit you like a freight train. They're going to mess you up. So um, <laughs> that's what the song is about. And it's been crazy because since the song dropped, you know, just been posting it on Instagram and whatnot. And Pink Whitney, the actual drink, they, they picked it up, the song, and they were like, oh, our new anthem. And I was like, that's so <laughs> sick. Yeah, I was I was wondering if like they were involved in any way with like you writing the song, but I I guess they kind of discovered it after you put it out, so that's that's even yeah more, that's even cooler. Yeah, not initially <laughs> they were just they had no idea. I was just like, no, I, that was just that it just fits so well writing the song. I was like, it's Pink Whitney, it's Pink yeah. Whitney. There's no denying it. And then I posted it, and they were like, oh yeah, so very cool. <laughs> that's that's awesome that they they kind of picked that up and they're gonna uh put their their brand behind it. <laughs> But, um, what, so, you know, you mentioned playing, uh, playing at Billy Bob's, uh, what are, what are some of your favorite venues that you've had the, the opportunity to perform at and what are maybe some that you have your sights set on for the future as goals? Yeah, definitely one of the really cool venues, uh, one of the coolest venues that I've had the opportunity to play, um, especially in Texas, I got to play ACL Live. Um, that was definitely a really cool place to get to play. Right. Uh, I definitely think one that would be on my, my bucket list for sure would be um, getting to play uh, the Ryman. I think that would be super mm. cool, the Ryman. Obviously, obviously, the Opry would be, like, that's that's yeah. super cool. Um, I've uh, had the opportunity. One of my favorite places to play, even, like, locally, is Sawyer Park. Sawyer Park is so fun. That One and of my favorite a, venues. It's over in spring, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm not too far from there. Actually, I went to high school over near Spring to Klein Collins High School, but oh, cool. uh, but yeah, it, I haven't had the chance to go to Sawyer Park yet. Though, is it is it a cool cool place? Should I check it out? <laughs> oh, it's so cool! It's got to be one of my favorite venues to play. I've done. Uh, we did the release party for my single Orange at uh, Sawyer okay. Park, 
And then when we just opened for Kevin Fowler and Roger Krager, we just did it. We, they have an outdoor stage that they bring out, you know, in the, you know, cooler months. Um, right. And we just played a, a show out there. I think it was the biggest they've had so far. So it was really fun. Man, Roger Krager and Kevin Fowler, but that was a, that was a fun time. <laughs> yeah, it was their Dos Barachos show. So it was like, oh, it was okay, yeah. <laughs> insane. And they brought me That's up on true. stage and they're like, they're like, oh man, we're going to take some shots of tequila. You go up on stage. And I was like, <laughs> oh my gosh, man, this would be crazy. <laughs> they, they turn up, man. Oh yeah. You know what? I mean, you, you can just tell by their music. <laughs> you don't even have to know them. <laughs> oh, they're so fun. It's a good time. So much fun. We had a blast. <laughs> And then, uh, who were some of your favorite artists um, from from other genres, maybe outside of the genre that you are in, that you kind of look to for inspiration today? Yeah, honestly, like I love the whole um, kind of. I mean, on on other genres, uh, I've definitely yeah. taken some influence from some of like the women in the rock rock scene. Obviously, the greats, you know. Uh, Stevie Nicks and um, mm. even like like Janis Joplin, I, oh, I yeah. love that whole vibe. Even you know sometimes I'm like, man, if I ever didn't do country music, if country music didn't have my heart, I could I could see myself maybe doing some rock. That'd be fun. Yeah, well, you could always you know you could always pull a Hardy and do half and half. Half and half, <laughs> literally, about, literally yeah, half and half. Literally half and half. I don't know. That's why. I, that album is so cool. I still, I was, when he released that, I was listening to that for like months just because the way it switches, like right in the middle, is crazy. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Especially like, even like the radio song. But I remember the first oh, time yeah. hearing that song, I, I literally, I was laughing so hard when I heard that. <laughs> I was like, that's oh, funny, yeah, dude. Crack me up. <laughs> Um, but yeah, he kind of, he kind of hit the um, hammer right on the head of the nail there with all that stuff. Oh yeah, totally killed it. (laughs) But what are, uh, what are some things that you consider hobbies or that you're passionate about outside of music? I know you played, uh, softball for a long time and that was something you're interested in, but any other hobbies or passions outside of music? Yeah. Um, honestly I love like, well, more in the summer months, obviously I love to get to like hit the lake or whatever and go jet ski, you know, we'll oh, yeah. have full on lake days. Like that's totally my vibe. I like to work out. That is definitely a, a hobby of mine. I love, I mm-hmm. love to hit the gym. Um, you know, I, I like just really getting to whether it's have kickbacks with my friends or just spend time with family and just yeah. kind of have that time to just be with people and just, good food good music have a good oh, yeah. time like i'm i'm all i'm all about that that's i'm good with just chilling with people i think it's so fun yeah so very much a people person <laughs> yeah i mean you know yeah. it's funny because i mean maybe like you know i'm not one of those people that's like oh my gosh it's party all the time but i'm like <laughs> man i love good people i love being around good people you know mm. and do you have any new music that's coming soon or any other announcements that you want to, you want to share here on the podcast? I do. I have some new stuff coming towards, I would say probably the very, very, very beginning of next year, which I'm really excited about. I can't get too into detail about it, but I will be in the studio, um, come November. So I'm really excited about that. We got, got an album, an EP. Can you, can you leak anything like that? <laughs> you know, I, I don't know about an album. I would love to do that. And I, I would love to do something that's kind of like of an album, those albums that flow, you know, where it's just like you mm-hmm. listen top to bottom and like, you have to just listen to the song after the next. Like, yeah, I, I'm that, that would be a, a goal for me is to get to do an album like that. I'd love that. Right. So maybe we'll see one in the future. <laughs> maybe that would be super cool. Um, and then, uh, I see, I see you got a little collection of guitars and a little ukulele behind you as well. Um, what was your first guitar? First guitar, honestly. Okay. Well, the first guitar that I ever had, like that I played was actually a gift from a family friend. I'm trying to see if I have it around here and it's an old, old, uh, Spanish parlor guitar. That's like, like over a hundred years old when it was given to me. So now it's gotta be like a hundred and. 20 years old like it's 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 old so i remember and it was a little tiny thing and i'm trying to think where where it's at but um that was the first one that i ever remember like just like literally playing and trying to play chords on that little thing i never Mm -hmm. there was no like electronics in it or anything i think it's all dirt 
So <laughs> there was no way I was playing that in shows. But um, I remember when I was um, real little, my folks got me like a a, a jet black. Um, it was a like an Epiphone electric guitar. And I remember, oh, yeah. you know, getting to play that, you know, kind of working my way up. And mm -hmm. um, since then, now I've got, you know, my my baby's a, a Martin Streetmaster with like a mahogany body. And it's like, I love mm. like that rich, like deep bassy sound, especially from mm. an acoustic. So I just wanted to say thank you so much for uh, for taking the time to come on the the Red Dirt Aggie show today. Um, oh, thank you. No, thanks so much for having a, me. Yeah, no, it's been uh, it's been fun. We'll have to have you back on sometime uh in the future but um absolutely thanks for I stopping love that. by today uh this has been the red dirt aggie show i'm brian the red dirt aggie that over there is peyton howie um uh, but thanks for listening and we'll see you next time